Madrid is one of the sunniest cities in Europe and doesn't sleep, which is why I chose to go there for my birthday last year. In this video, you'll learn a few unique and cool things to do to fill your itinerary to Madrid day or night, whether you're gonna stay for three or four days. Come right up. Hi everyone, I'm Antoinette and welcome back to my channel. Frog and Courage is a travel, food, and lifestyle channel. So if you're interested in traveling to Madrid, go ahead and click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let's get straight into it. For your first day in Madrid, there's a lot of things to do. You can always take a bike tour if you only have one day, or if you just want a quick lay of the land. You'll see a lot of the major sites and monuments in just a few hours, maybe three or four hours, and you'll get a drink along the way. Your first stop could be the Plaza de Cibeles, which is a symbol of Madrid. There's a huge fountain and it used to be the Palace of Communication and now that's where the city council meets. It is a completely photogenic spot and perfect for your first day in Madrid. In the same area, you can walk to Buen Retiro or El Retiro Park. The park used to be the famous gardens of the royal palace, but now it's a public space and it's an expansive green space. You can spend some time in the beautiful rose gardens or go see the statue walk where there are all types of statues lined in a row. You can also go to the Palacio de Cristal or the Crystal Palace, which is a gorgeous site. And it's also a popular venue for outdoor events and art galleries. You can grab a picnic with some friends or by yourself by grabbing some tapas and spreading a blanket out in the green space. You can rent a boat, you can ride a bike, you can listen to live performances. There's a lot to do at Buen Retiro Park, so do not miss it. And it's a great respite from the warm Madrid weather. After the park, you can check out the Museo del Prado, one of the best museums in Spain, which houses the largest collection of Spanish as well as European art in the entire country. While you're there, you can check out Velázquez's famous Las Meninas, as well as the Garden of Earthly Delights, and a bunch of other beautiful, breathtaking pieces of art. I did a whole video just on the Museo del Prado, how to get in for free, as well as some things to see. Just go ahead and click the link above or check it out in the description down below. Another thing you can do in Madrid is shoe shopping. Yes, espadrilles are fire in Madrid. Oh my goodness, let me tell you. So check out Casa de Hernans for some authentic, handmade, and affordable espadrilles for men, women, and children. And stay tuned because I'm gonna do a video all about buying from the famous Casa Hernans. Speaking of buying espadrilles at Casa Hernans, if you walk directly out of the store to your left, then guess what? You are at the world famous Plaza Mayor. This plaza was built in the late 15th and early 16th centuries and used to be the site of major public gatherings and still currently today it's the site of public gatherings and performances and shows and there's a lot of shopping and restaurants in the area so definitely check that out while you're in Madrid. Once you're done browsing around Plaza Mayor you can head down to Restaurante Sobrino de Boten or Restaurante Boten which is the World Guinness record oldest operating restaurant in the world. It was built in 1725 and they still serve their world famous suckling pig in the original ovens. It is delicious and you have to have reservations. I did a whole blog about my personal experience there so check that out in the description down below. Another option for you is to check out Puerto de Sol. This is the main central spot in Spain. It connects all kinds of different metro lines. There are shops, restaurants, bars, and not to mention El Oso y El Madreño, which is the bear and the strawberry tree, an iconic symbol of Madrid. And that's also where the famous clock stands for New Year's Eve. So if you want to participate in a New Year's Eve countdown, you need to be at Puerto de Sol. On your second day in Madrid, check out more of the famous museums that make up the triangle of museums in the area. The Reina Sofia Museum, which houses Picasso's Guernica, as well as the Tyson Borni Misa, which is a beautiful, beautiful place to check out wonderful art. While you're in the area, did you know Madrid has a green wall? Yes, it is a vertical garden. Not a horizontal garden, but a vertical garden that stands on the side of the Caxa Forum building. This thing is so cool and you don't even expect it. Not only is it helping to keep the air clean in Madrid, but it's usually about seven degrees cooler. So if you're walking around all day and need just a little rest, just park yourself on the side of this green wall. It showcases 15,000 plants and over 250 native species. It is a can't miss site in Madrid. 
After cooling down under the green wall, don't forget to stop by San Gines for some famous churros y chocolate. And at night, what better way to celebrate the Spanish culture than with a flamenco show? And if you want to turn it up just a notch, don't just go to attend and watch a flamenco show. You may want to take a workshop, a flamenco workshop before the show. And guess what? Maybe you want to get dinner after your workshop. So you have a flamenco workshop, dinner, and performance all in one night. It is so fun. When I went, I ran into a hen party um, from Scotland and we had a blast having drinks, learning how to dance, and just enjoying the culture and the music and the sound and the dance. And just so you know, so you're not frantically writing down everything there is to do, I put all the descriptions for everything I'm talking about from the tours and also I have a couple of Madrid resources from Lonely Planet as well as Rick Steves guides all linked down below. On your third day in Madrid, you may want to consider eating. Well, of course you're going to eat everywhere in Madrid, but Madrid's food is on fire, y'all. From paella to tapas to sangria, there's a lot to eat and I'm going to do a video, so click that subscribe button to be notified of when I'll post a top 10 things to eat in Madrid. In addition to eating everything, you can learn how to make it yourself by attending a cooking class. Some classes come with a market tour. There are also tapas crawls, bar crawls, seafood paella making classes. There's the whole gamut of cooking courses, so check one of those out if you're interested in getting hands-on in Madrid. After filling your belly, you can stop by the Royal Palace, which is one of the largest palaces in the world by square footage that you can see. Definitely buy your tickets online and in advance before you go. It's no longer the official residence of the royal family, but it is used for state dinners and state functions till this very day. And before you actually get to the palace, there are a number of beautiful fountains right across the street from it, almost like an introduction to the palace. There's gorgeous lions and water. So check those out and take a couple of pictures before you head to the palace. After visiting the palace, if you're feeling regal and like you wanna spend a little money on yourself, check out the Grand Via, which houses a lot of 1900s architecture and a ton of shopping. I think I went to like a three level Zara there. It was crazy. And there's a lot of cool things to purchase on that street. Another thing you can do in Madrid is check out the Plaza de Toros de Ventas, which is the bullfighting ring in Madrid. So you can tour the official stadium. You can even get live demonstrations. You can even take a quick tour to see some of the bulls as well as get a history of bullfighting. If bullfighting isn't your thing and if you're interested in more food, then you need to check out Mercado San Miguel or the San Miguel Market. This is a nighttime activity, y'all. It is buzzing with tons of great food and a lot of people who are there to see and be seen and eat and to chill. You'll meet a lot of people there. You might have to fight for some space, but it's a really fun experience and a cool market to just chill at at night. And for your fourth day in Madrid, or you can use one of these activities for any of your other days, then you may want to consider some type of a day trip. You can take day trips to a villa in Segovia to see the Roman aqueducts that are still standing from 5 AD. You can go to Toledo or Cordoba. You can even take a high-speed train two hours away to Barcelona. You can also check out Salamanca, El Escorial, and the Valley of the Fallen Monument all within a couple of hours away from Madrid. For all you soccer or football friends, oh yeah, Real Madrid is of course in Madrid. Take a tour of the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium where you can go behind the scenes and see where your favorite players get dressed and walk the same hallways as they do and maybe even take a tour of the field. And then possibly end your day at a rooftop market. Madrid has the most trees per resident in any other country. So don't be surprised if you go to a trendy rooftop bar, say maybe at San Anton Market and see trees and have a great cocktail and just really end your time in Madrid relaxing and taking in the scenery. Everything I mentioned in this video is linked down below, so don't forget to share this video with a friend who's going to Madrid, and also subscribe to my channel where you'll get notifications of when I'll post another video, like the video on Casa Hernans and the 10 things to eat in Madrid, and also don't forget to check out my how to get around Madrid on a budget video, and my video on the Museo del Prado. As I like to say, now that you know how to fill your itinerary in Madrid, it's time to frolic, have courage, and just go. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.